is poppin' people? We have yet another Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon trailer revealed to us this morning. It seems like they are actually trying to sell this game, people. I repeat, it seems like they are actually trying to sell this game. I had my doubts for the longest time. They showed us Mantine surfing. I don't give a fuck about that, all right? <laughs> but what I do care about are these clean Ultra Beasts that they're showing us. They're also showing us that we can actually go into their habitats and fight them where they live. That is sick, that's what I expected in Sun and Moon, but when I walked into Ultra Space in Sun and Moon, it was a garage, all right? Now we can actually explore this place, clean. So let's start from the top and we'll get to the exciting stuff at the end, all right? So we're gonna start at the very top, we're gonna read all this stuff directly from the website. I'm gonna be showing you guys pictures as well as we go along. To the worlds that await beyond, in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon, you'll be able to ride on the backs of the legendary Pokemon, so Galio and Lunala, to travel through an Ultra Wormhole and reach the worlds that lie beyond. The Ultra Wormholes are strange pockets of space that have been seen in the Alola region before. In Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, players saw a hint of the worlds that could lie beyond. A hint? <laughs> Boy, that was like a grain of salt. Absolutely nothing. It was like a grain of salt in a, in a pond, dude. It was like a grain of rice in some soup. It did nothing, all right? They literally showed us Ultra Garage, Ultra Garage Sale, and it, it was nothing, all right? But now, like I said, it literally seems that like we can go into Ultra Space and explore all of it, and it's so sick, all right? <laughs> but most of the truth remains shrouded in mystery. You don't say. Anyways, um, there's another excerpt here. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon, you can explore the various worlds that lie through these Ultra Wormholes. Within an Ultra Wormhole, there are countless warp holes that lead to different worlds. Try exploring different worlds by passing through these warp holes. You can even go to the home worlds of the mysterious Ultra Beast. So that's what we saw before. So it seems like Ultra Space leads to different worlds itself. And one of the worlds it leads to is the one we live in. And then another one of the worlds that it leads to is the one, you know, say Zerkatree lives in, or Guz, uh, or Guzzlord, or Buzzwool, stuff like that. So in the trailer that they, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I can't really show clips of the trailer in my videos because <laughs> Pokemon like instantly bans them from YouTube. So I, I uh, have to get pictures, but um, you guys can see some of their habitats in these pictures right here. In the trailer, you actually, you know, they actually take you to, um, Buzzwool's habitat and then he shows up and you fight him and it's really cool. There's a, there's a nice cutscene and everything uh, So you guys can see right here um, I don't really know which ones these are specifically <laughs> If you guys watch the trailer, you'll see probably and then we got more information about why these people are so damn pale uh, This is basically building off what I kind of deduced uh, in my last video it was pretty obvious now that I think about it though, like there's only one reason these people would be so extremely pale, right? And that's if there's no light or sunlight um, on them to make them a little darker. So here we have a place called Ultra Megalopolis and that's the place that these people come from and that's the place that Necrozma stole the light from. So because they live there and there's no light there, they're actually super pale like I, like I thought, I figured that'd be it. And apparently their name is the Ultra Recon Squad. So they're actually trying to stop Necrozma themselves apparently. They're trying to figure out what's going on and they live in the place that Necrozma stole the light from. So that's why they're so pale like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and read up on these guys as well. By traveling through Ultra Wormhole, you can reach Ultra Megalopolis, a world that has had its light stolen by Necrozma. So that's what we were talking about last, uh, you know, last video. Within this world wrapped in darkness, a mysterious tower-like building shines with brilliant light. What could possibly wait atop it? Uh huh. You just told me that <laughs> Necrozma stole the light. And in this world, there's a place with all this light coming out of it. So it kind of just tells me that Necrozma's in there somewhere. <laughs> or or he maybe he stores the light that he steals in this place. I don't know. Anyways, we can learn more about the Ultra Recon Squad right here. The Ultra Recon Squad is a mysterious group that has come from a world that lies beyond an Ultra Wormhole. For what purpose have they come to the Alola region? Players will see the story told from somewhat different perspectives in each version. With Dulce and Zossie playing a central role in Pokemon Ultra Sun, and Solaria and, and Fico taking that role in Pokemon Ultra Moon. I think that the two on the right are 
uh, Soleria and Fico. So those are the two we've been seeing the most. Uh, and then the ones on the left are uh, Dulce and Zossi. <laughs> Zossi. So it seems like, you know, it's version dependent. That's cool. I might just get Ultra Moon because I like the guy's mustache. Straight up. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. That might be the only reason I get Ultra Moon. Straight up. And then to top it all off with today's trailer, they showed a brand new Ultra Beast. And he goes by the code name Ultra Beast Adhesive. So apparently he's really sticky or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but here it says the Ultra Recon Squad brings with them an Ultra Beast never before seen. It is known by the code name UB Adhesive. Ultra Beast possessed my blah 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 blah. All right, and then they give us more details on him on the page that they display him on. He's Poison type. So this Pokemon actually looks really really cool. Okay. Like, there's something unique about him. He looks like a damn Dragon Ball Z character or something. I don't know what's going on with that big ass head. I'm about to get you. Damn. Head looking like a damn pumpkin. I'm about to roast you. Jesus Christ. Your head is bigger than the rest of your entire body. Holy crap. Jesus. Why do you have a baby bottle attached to you? Okay, you know what? Let me just stop. Anyways, so this is the Poison Pin Pokemon. He's very tiny. He kind of reminds me of like a Pixie type, like 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 a Mew, Victini, Celebi type Pokemon. I don't know if he is that, but he reminds me of that. Like just, you know, just the small build. I think all of them are around the same height or something. I'm not quite sure or not. But either way, uh, we have a Poison type Ultra Beast right here, Pure Poison. We already had Nihiliga that was Poison and Rot, but we have a Pure Poison type. I'm hoping this Pokemon is really, really, really fast and really, really, really strong so that he just straight up blows away every single Tapu because they're all fairy type. I hope this Pokemon is a direct check to every single last one of them. That'd be kind of clean if you ask me. Anyways, uh, we didn't really get much information on this Pokemon. Um, it gives us information, you know, like Pokedex information. It doesn't give us like stats or attacks or anything like that, but let's go ahead and read the Pokedex stuff. UB Adhesive displays many emotions and it's said to be able to understand human speech if it spends enough time together with them. So I'm thinking he could be the po the Pixie Pokemon. Was there a Pixie Pokemon in Gen 7? Because I can't think of it if there was one. Oh, Magearna. Damn it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. There was a Gen that had two. Which one was it? Was it 5th Gen? I think it was 5th Gen. What? Well, there was a generation with two Pixies. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I'm pretty sure it was 5th Gen. Anyways. Their large heads are filled with venom. And they fire this venom from the poisonous needles on top of them. Okay, so that's the information we got about UB Adhesive. And they also revealed the typings of the other UBs they displayed in the other trailer. So UB Assembly is Rock and Steel. Uh, he's the Rampart Pokemon. Uh, very, very heavy. Very, very tall. While UB Assembly may appear to be made up of stones stacked atop one another, apparently each stone is in fact a separate life form. And this UB is made up of an assemblage of these life forms. When confronting another, or when feeling particularly enraged, the eyes on these stones begin to glow red. Oh boy, that's scary as hell. Uh, and then last but not least, we have UB Burst, which is fire and ghost. Okay, can we talk about this? Poison? Rock and steel? Fire and ghost? Every single last one of these Pokemon gets blown away by a ground type. I'm bringing a Garchomp to every battle, I don't care. <laughs> every single last one of these UBs gets blown back by Garchomp, straight up, or any ground type. <laughs> so this one's Fire and Ghost. That's actually not what I expected at all. A lot of people expected Fire, just because of its special move that it used. Uh, and it actually has a very, very strong special move, apparently, called Mind Blown, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, and apparently it does half of its HP just for using it and hitting it. So it's gotta have a very, very high base power automatically. It's gotta be like base 150 or something, like, something crazy because if that's the side effect to using this move you can only use it twice potentially you can only use the move twice in battle unless you have some recovery and it's got to be at least base 150 it might even be more powerful than base 150 because taking half of your own life with an attack that you hit is ridiculous so i would even go as far as to say base 160 minimum but we're gonna see we're gonna see how accurate i am on this i'm it's got to be at the very minimum base 150. Like, I'm not taking less than that at all. Because the downside of Draco Meteor, which is base 140 or base 130 now, I think, 
is to lower your special attack by two stages, okay? That's pretty bad, but that's not as bad as losing half of your HP, okay? So I think it makes sense for it to be at least base 150, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see. <laughs> UB Burst tricks targets into letting their guard down as it draws near with its funny gait, swaying this way and that, then shocks them by blowing up its own head without warning. Before <laughs> blowing up its own head without warning. <laughs> that sounds so crazy. Before they can recover their senses, it steals their vitality, which it's said to use as a source of energy. Okay, so they have they have the description of its attack down here, but they don't tell us how much power it has. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that part. Its head is made up of a collection of curious sparks, and it appears to have the wondrous ability to freely remove its own head and make it explode. <laughs> okay. And then it has its attack right here, UB Burst Go-To Move Mind Blown. With this fire type special move, the user sacrifices half of its maximum HP to deal damage. It seems par for the chorus of UB Burst, which attacks others by blowing up its own head. And despite its comical appearance, this move packs some serious power. I knew it. It's gotta be at least base 150. I know it is. It has to be. You can't take half of somebody's HP without you know, a reward, you know what I'm saying? And it's always taking half of their HP and it always does a lot of damage. So it's gotta be at least base 150. I'm calling it right now, base 150 or more, all right? And I'm pretty sure that's, that's, that's you know, that's pretty safe to bet. And if that's the case, I am slapping some choice specs on this thing. As soon as I get my hands on him, I'm Oko and everybody. Suicune's getting Oko. Tyranitar is getting Oko by a fire move in the sand. Let's go, a special one. Let's get it, all right? <laughs> and I think that's all I have today, guys. Um, I'm sure there's more information that I left out, but I don't think I left out anything too important. So uh, as soon as there's more information, I'll be back. So go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe if you guys did enjoy this video. Um, this game comes out in a month and a half, I believe, or a month and a, a little less than a month and a half. So uh, there's gonna be plenty of Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon content on this channel. Uh, best content on YouTube, of course, obviously, duh. Uh, but anyways, yeah, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and we'll be back when there is more news. Goodbye. <laughs>